Okay, so I'm going to show a little tip on taking a checkbox question and being able to graph it. Now, usually pivot tables, which we've done with multiple choice, it's pretty simple. It, it but the, the the checkboxes are a little different. So here's my form, and again, think of it. I'm not sure this is the best example, but say you're you have lots of different choices and you want to figure out, well, how many do I have to order for that? Or uh, how many people are going to be eating turkey? Or so, so there's our form. Here's our spreadsheet. And again, I want to look at, uh, be able to fit that in. So I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. So here we have, as you see, when you fill it in, this person chose, well, let's just look at desserts. It's simpler right now. Three options. You know, this person wants to eat all of this. So say you want to add up all the apple pies. Well, in a pivot table, normally what you could do um, is from multiple choice, it will just, it, it just has one option in, in these columns. So uh, one way to actually pull that, extract that data is using functions. So here I have, over here, I just added these fields. So what I did in, in order to have the options, a quick way to get those is, so for instance, in desserts, I could actually just copy all of this right from my form, go over here, and I can paste it here. So then I have the options there, so I don't have to copy and paste one at a time. But now I want to have a function. So here I want total. So I put totals up here. And now a lot of people use count if. Well, count if doesn't necessarily pull it. It will count it if it's in this cell. Um, so the formula that we're going to use Here's an example. I'm just going to copy it. If you take this formula, so if you look up here, it's count if. Again, if, we'll change the column, um, and, but it's it's con con concatenate as well. Um, whatever I have to look that up, but and it has some little um, um, calls here. Again, you have to have this. Uh, so I'm going to actually copy this and I'll put it in in this cell as the formula, but as you see, it's pulling cheesecake. So what I want to do is I want to change that to pumpkin pie. And, and I'll put in pumpkin pie, but I have to also look, well, it's, it's actually looking for, I want to make sure it's in, let's see, C. Yep, it is. So that it is in C. And now I did it to 40, but say if you had a lot of other people filling it out, you might, you might just continue that. Um, and so it's pulling. So counted three. Let's double check. Yep, there's three, uh, three pumpkin pies. One, two, three. Right. So what you could also do is go down here and I'm going to have to change that to apple pie. So I'm sure there may be another way to do this simpler. Um, and if people have that, they could, they could post um, a correction and let us know what it is. And here we go, ice cream. So I'm going to make ice cream. So I've just adjusted what it's pulling, uh, ice cream. And, and sometimes copying and pasting is better because you could have typos. Now, something happened that's not correct because I have more than, um, oh, you know why? It's only pulling it from five, C5. I actually want to see dragging it down probably wasn't a good idea. Um, oh, let me close that um, because what it did, it, it didn't copy the whole thing. So you want to make sure it's, it's C2, so it's from all the way from here to heat all the way down this, this column. Um, so now that I have the totals, I can graph it. So again, you just select that area. I mean, I could and click on the little chart. And here you could switch rows and columns. You might do it this way and use headers. So now I have a little graph of how many I'd have to order or the, and you could also adjust and customize your charts over here as well.
So, so that's a quick way to, again, pulling data from a checklist um, form in Google Forms.